Okay, so this is a walkthrough of the my garage pegboard, maybe give you some ideas for what uh, you might want to do and um, and take portions of it and, and use it or, or to take it all, whatever you'd like. Um, this section here is the majority of the tools. Um, as you can see, it's pretty densely packed. And then over here is a new section I added. Um, recently i'd say within the last two months and so it's not it's not obviously as dense because it's still kind of a uh, work in motion um, i moved a this table i built on casters I, I moved it from over behind the car which was over here this whole section i moved that to over here so now that i moved it over here i really like the access better i can come right in roll out the chair, sit down, do something really quick. So I have just really bare tools here on a magnetic rail. Those are three to five dollars at Harbor Freight. You can find it even online, probably for a similar price. Or make your own, you know, stick some old magnets, fridge magnets on a piece of metal, it'll work too probably. Um, I put all the drills here and all the hammers because uh, it just fit and I use the drills probably significantly more than uh, most of the tools and then a tool belt on a hook um, baskets are left over right now they're still in flux um, one thing I learned from I think this is from like a handyman article a long time ago which is take an old this is an old like wipes container and put your safety glasses in it Let's see if I can open this with one hand there we go Against me. So if you ever have safety glasses and they get dusty in the garage, you know, I just throw them in here. And uh, you can also use an old sock and put them in your sock because, you know, every time you put those glasses on full of crap, you don't really want to wear them anymore. Um, anyway, so this is just the basics. Um, what I did over here, why this is so densely packed, is that I took this old giant red cabinet and I had a double tall one here too and I'm emptying them out because I found I just have lots of <laughs> it was just rat holing things so I'm like let's get on the pegboard because um, I have work come to me you know the car comes to me I bring projects in from outside I don't go out into the I don't need to roll things out there so if you're like that pegboard that might be useful to you um, but if you're traveling places, maybe the pegboard isn't so great. So if you're you know, on-site job contractor, you may not want that. So, but for me, um, I was tired of digging in drawers. So the thing I had to do was get socket rails. This is Harbor Freight, this is 20 bucks. You can get, it comes with ha uh, half inch, three eighths and quarter inch. I ended up having to buy a lot more, four more rails of quarter inch. Because it just wasn't enough, so uh, metric, metric, metric. So long and short of three eighths, then quarter inch, then standard, same thing. Um, deep well, regular, three eighths deep well, or a quarter inch deep well, and and uh, quarter inch um, standard, or you know normal depth. Anyway. Um, Filled them all up. I, I used to have these things are called socket trays. You can also get these. You can also hang these. There's a hole right here. And I really like these because they tell you oh exactly what the number is. But it was difficult to manage to take to take this. I would usually take the whole tray with me somewhere, right? You're going to with a job and the car, underneath the car. And if you knock these over, oh god, then they go everywhere. You can't find it. So even though they're numbered, I really didn't like the use of this so much. Um, by the way, these are just the extras. This is my, this is my third set, so this is my extras. So that's why I'm missing so many. The primary set is up here. So I, I realized doing hanging all this stuff too. I have way too many sockets, way too many things I should get rid of. So I'm gonna get rid of those and take them uh, to the goodwill. Um, so I put them all in order. Yes, I don't know if they're standard or metric right now. I mean, I know it in, implicitly, but if you're looking at this explicitly, you wouldn't know, 
right, necessarily. So maybe you could come up with some sort of coloring or labeling system if you'd like. Um, normal hex drive. Then there's I have this another rail. This is also Harbor Freight. These things are only 99 cents there, by the way, these rails. You know, they come uh, with ever size quarter inch, half inch, or, or three eighths. So a buck is pretty good. That's cheaper than eBay. And I put all the star drives on there. So that one, which I don't use very often. I almost use this. Then I got all of the Torx bits heads. I bought this, I don't know, I was like 15. So a long, long time ago. And I, <laughs> I hardly ever use it, but um, I wanted to hang that. I had a leftover socket rail um, handle from a long time ago in Sears. So I used that, whatever. And then lastly is just the uh, potpourri bag, I guess, of sockets. So, you know, maybe you're seeing these things, you know, probably I saw it on TV a long time ago and had to have it, right? I probably use this once or twice a year. And then they have an extra one for whatever reason. And then all the little uh, adapters, or in this case, this is a like a ball and socket joint adapter for three eighths a half inch you know and i have two sets i have a standard and an impact probably because i saw this one on sale um but you probably have the same thing i bet if you start digging in your socket drawers i bet you'll find the same thing you'll probably have a lot of different <laughs> you might even have lots of duplicates lastly is the socket extenders the three eighths and the quarter inch and you notice i put them here but i don't have any other socket extenders here this is something i couldn't find online and maybe it will help you um this screwdriver holder is what I put in there and um, you know like this thing is way too small everything but the half inch is actually way too small initially I wrapped it around here put a hook and I hung them like like you would at the store you know when you go oh I'm gonna get a uh, something off there well it just wouldn't hold up also I know it was it was just a test to see if it would work and it just doesn't work for me and plus that tape is always on there you know the little tab so imagine you make your little like a little hanger out of tape, or, or you could do strings and a, another string and hang it, hang it, fine. It, it could work for you. I ended up going with this. Um, I just get another screwdriver rail, and I end up putting tape. So in between this, oh, I just sandwich two pieces of tape. Take one, take another one, take a pair of scissors, take a pair of scissors, and then I take a box cutter, I just cut a little hole or a little X-Acto knife, and then I really just put, push that through. I just made enough slit so I can push that through and it's all it is is holding so I'm going from long to short and that's why I wanted something to hang like this and not put it on here because obviously it would shoot off in your face you know you got a 12 inch extension rail extension socket extension you don't want so I didn't see anywhere else that had that but maybe you could try that out the other idea I had was um, take a piece of wood like a long piece of wood or, or an L bracket you know something with a leg and a vertical post and drill holes in it and then line your socket extensions up like this so using a lot of depth but you're not using much width left to right um, I didn't have that problem I still had room here and I didn't have to make anything I had this other than put some tape on there so sh short of that you maybe give that a try but when you create that bracket you don't have to do some some sort of drilling and woodworking and getting your getting a hook uh, if you were to do that route um, but anyway, I had this. These are like two dollars at Harbor Freight. Um, single, you can buy them in kits. Obviously, I have a lot. I went back and bought like six because I found, man, I got all these things I need to hang from that, from the tool chest and the big tool chest that's not here. I moved it to the shed and gonna give it away. Um, and put it up here. So I had all these sockets, uh, ratchets, and you know the little stubbies and the. the adjustable neck and you know I'm sure you have stuff like that too so that's a probably a recent development that's why I'm talking about this more I put more of my sockets up here um, and really I put them here because I had the most flexibility here maybe if you had if you looked at how you orient your work if you don't do a lot of socket work you know you're not working on the car then Maybe this thing needs to go up higher and take things that are used more often at an eye level. Kind of like at the grocery store, you know, they always put the expensive things at eye level and the cheap things go down on the floor or, or go way up high. Okay, so just a quick walkthrough with those pegboards. This thing is really heavy, I mean, comparatively to most other things, so beefier hooks. Um, there's been no tear out here, so I'm encouraged by that. I also haven't put any of those, um, that little black... Um, covers they keep the hooks in they, these little things 
I didn't put these in yet because I'm still, you know, making sure everything works well. So put all the socket stuff together, wrenches, uh, drill extensions. I also put those here. I came with those. Those came with the original packaging, so I still keep them. If everything came, if I still had these uh, like this, I would use that. But you can't even find those little plugs that hang on here, so that's why I made this little system. Um, but same, so the motif is kind of like you know sockets, wrenches, you know, big old uh, pipe wrenches, long handle wrenches. I even put my torque wrenches up there. Um, I probably only torque, you know a couple things a year I don't do much car work right now but when I had two old cars I did a lot of car work um, and so you can probably keep them in the cases and put them up there too um, above that is a uh, more like strap wrenches you know you use on a faucet or something you don't want to mar up so um, and also like combination wrenches so the MacGyver type wrenches I guess I call them you know they got lots of adjustability um, and further Further down is pliers, so kind of in that same family, I thought, okay. And I hung them just on a straight hook. I thought this was a good idea because they take up depth, not much width. And the same thing I found out, oh my God, I got four <laughs> vice grips. I got <laughs> two more little ones and a chain wrench I used to use for a timing belt. And then through four more needle nose you know it's like mm, I need to clean up some you know probably get rid of these or donate them I mean you know sell them something like that uh, eventually because when you start digging stuff out you start realizing you have too much things at least in my case um, I thought this was uh, also a hang up my ratcheting wrenches my old these got to be 15 10 years old these harbor freight or whatever cheap um, wrenches none of my stuff is expensive by the way so I don't do this for a living you know I'm just a DIY home person so uh, you might scoff at the brands, but uh, I, I, they've been great for me. So um, next is like chisels, hand, um, spatulas, I guess, scrapers, <laughs> you know. Um, again, probably a lot, but sometimes I do use all of them, especially doing weird little projects like back buttering some tile. So a regular old brick chisel, cold chisel, and then I put a scraper hanging on, on the two-handle one. Uh, this is another paint scraper. It's not over here. I just never moved it. But trying to keep all the scrapers together and then drywall tools um, as well. All the big knives together. Another drywall. I got two sanding uh, blocks. I don't know. I got two, but that's what happened. The drywall knife. So I don't know. Kind of put it together. Just keeping with the, the pry bar theme, you know pry bar that's a dollar tree if you can imagine you can get that at the dollar tree i've used this a lot actually <laughs> this pry bar and then this one is another harbor freight this is like got a cat's paw and a, and a pry bar on it also very helpful especially if you want to pry off uh oh like molding on the wall like baseboard i would use let's see i would use this like a big flat one and this and it would stick this behind and it'll be touching the drywall and then put the red pry bar in front and pop i replaced all the baseboard in the house it was the old style um and it works really well in this type of hook i don't know what this type of hook is but this comes typically in a kit this uh, item it, it's very specific i don't use it for hardly anything else and it's really hard to find individually at least at home depot or harbor freight or lowe's i don't see these individually Okay, so I'm still moving right, left to right. Uh, pry bars. Lots of little pry bars, things for every use. Just a straight peg. Um, you might have this problem too. I had to drill a hole in this and hang it. So if you have that case, you know, don't feel like you can't hang something up. I used an old, actually this is from the torque wrench. This is the click type torque wrench to cover up most of these teeth because this uh, flexible, like a molding saw is very sharp the little teeth are very sharp so put all the saws together some big old saws just as a grab bag you know a japanese hand saw um a regular uh like a harvey's saw it's called Har the company is harvey's and there's all these replaceable blades that my um grandfather gave me so got a lot there and just hang them all in one one giant hook that hook is probably six inches long 
and nestled on the top, which has been there for a long time, is a nail gun. So the framing nailer, the brad nailer, and the pin nailer. And I use just normal straight up hooks. For the heavy one, for the framing nailer, I used these. These come in a kit at Home Depot or Har I believe Harbor Freight too. So just beefier, you know, gives two points of contact for every side. And um, uh, when I built the basement and I did a bunch of framing, I used it all the time. Now it sits up here for for the next project. Um, next kind of, so I'm like cutting, I was moving to cutting and then stapling. Uh, I got my stapler, um, uh, both types, the hammer stapler as well as behind here, the um, just a regular Brad stapler and reg you know, um, I don't use that much, so it's behind there. Bolt cutters, wire pullers, staple pullers, more cutting with the bow saw, harp, um, a plumber saw, and um, my 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 regular old metal saw. Uh, God, I can't think of the word. Uh, from there, uh, I still have uh, more of that. Uh, a magnetic strip screwed it right to the piece of wood. I added. You can see there's a joint here. I added a piece after the fact, so this is eight feet long, all the way down, and then I was like, oh, I got all these new things, I gotta make something for it. So that's why I'm screwing that to the wood. That's a whole saw kit. Uh, I like it because, uh, in this case, I had that available, but you could do this with, with pegs. I'm f fairly sure, just a straight peg. You see that everything's got a hole in it, so uh, probably minus this, you'd have to come up with a uh, something to stick that on, but almost everything else has a hole, so you don't need a magnet, but I had it available, I, I screwed it there. Um, next is, this is why I built this section, this was all rigid tools, this was a kit, you know, a Black Friday sale, and lots of stuff. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it was seven tools, two batteries, I guess it was eight tools, um, in there as well, and, uh, and I needed, I wanted a battery powered saw and these batteries have our lifetime uh, when you buy it in the kit. When you buy them individually, mm, they don't. Uh, but I've read the fine print, it's, it's, uh, it's been great for me and the operate battery powered oscillating saw. That, this thing I probably use as much as the drill. It comes with two heads. Anyway, I, I made this whole thing rigid at one point and then I migrated the two drills that were right here. So remember I said over there. So. Uh, I freed up this space, and I started looking. I was digging around, I, you know, I, uh, from my tires to the car. Let's hang that thing up there. It had a space, and uh, not necessarily has any motif to it. It's just a head space, um, so it may or may not go. Then I had a whole tool. I have a whole tool of measurement tools and accuracy things, so you know, I realized I have two chalk lines. Also, I found I had four bottles of chalk. Why do I have four? I don't know. I kept buying more and more. It's like... Gotta get rid of those. Um, a line level, uh, a regular old, you know, your long 50 foot tape measure, plum bob, compass, um, combination square calipers, angle finders, um, hang them all up um, in order. Probably use these two the most of these systems, these tools. Um, I found a cheap pair of calipers at Harbor Freight, you know, was the best. The battery operated ones are very accurate. But they keep dying because I only use it every couple times a year. And then the garage, the battery dies. So I went with this one. I'm just trying to find, you know, I'm just trying to get close. I'm not machining something down. But I am needing to find, say, a diameter of internal, external diameter or something. I would use that. So I found the hanging that up. I use an old L bracket to wrap up my plumb bob. You could probably come up with a lot of other things. And then just hung it on two hooks like that. It's hard to hang a plumb bob. I mean, it's got a lot of weird parts and you could stick a hole through there, but then you have this to deal with. So maybe you got a better idea, let me know. Um, what do you got? This is um, precision screwdriver. So always like little electronics and things, you know, you always have a, uh, I kept a box for this, but you could make your own. This one, same story. Oh, this is really handy for like getting into, you know how electronics and little things have deep wells and you can't get to it with this because you can bottom out with the screwdriver. These things are really useful. Another Harbor Freight buy. And then lastly, or the bottom, you see this menagerie of screwdrivers. So long handle, these are all in drawers. And I was, I mean, I knew where they were and they were shadow boarded in the, in the, in the drawers 
in in the big version of this but I wanted to get them up here so we'll go from long to short so I got just get a bunch of these like I said Harbor Freight get them for like they're two dollars get a bunch oops I have an automatic light sensor I put in for my lights. sorry about that uh, and um, uh, flat screwdrivers then uh, this little stubby guy put them together and then onto nut drivers I had these all rat holed into the um, toolbox then I have these these came with a set these are just the normal torx bits kind of small guys rarely ever use these <laughs> I don't know when the last time I did then onto the normal uh, Phillips heads for a while you know you guys probably have this too maybe like a go-to dirty flathead screwdriver you're always using for prying and other stuff but then you have a go-to um, maybe like a combination screwdriver where it has multiple heads in it uh, and then I had some leftover space so I put my um, fire starter uh, in here another Dollar Tree and then a chisels I haven't found a great idea for this you see I have two here I have a big one and then I have this shorty one I've had for a long time and this cold chisel so I kind of put them together if if I was you know had more space or another idea I might put them hang them up over here somehow um, but right now they're just right here kind of sitting behind the files mainly the files you know are used for the lawnmower blade or cleaning up small holes so I, I wanted them hanging but I definitely don't use them all the time next is the I would say like the drill bit slash uh, nut driver for your for your um, your actual drill driver uh, accessories so all these little bits these spade bits you know, I wanted them in a place. Um, these are just because it all kind of goes together. So I got, I think, two of these magnetic rails back to back. And um, I found it useful to find, you know, to get to these. My go-to is probably this. If you're like me, you always it seems like drilling something small. So another Harbor Freight set. Stick them on here. Um, and I can, I put them in order. These I really liked. Um, uh, recently too to, to do your stepped holes um, nut drivers and these I stuck these here because I didn't have another space for um, Allen heads um, hex heads but it's kind of in the same motif I used to use that a lot to change my reciprocating saws blade before I got that battery powered one up on the wall so I marked it with a piece of tape maybe that will help you too maybe you got something that you use all the time or a wrench you can see I had this one in duct tape. This was my oil plug wrench or Subaru. So I would always use that one. Anyway, back to the magnet things. Bunch of nut drivers, magnetic tips, uh, as well as um, these socket adapters for, from the drill to the socket for half inch, quarter inch, and, and uh, three eighths. And it's kind of above this. So if I need this, I'll get one of those if I need to. And trying to keep that all um, together. Um, so now I got everything off of the floor, you know, from here. Now I just got to get rid of this. Now I have more room to walk around, um, and I can manage a little bit better. Up here is another one. Maybe you have a lot of, um, blades. I found this useful. Um, some hole saw bits, uh, center punches, blades for all the saws. I had that right here. I had, I just had that extra rail up top, so... Might as well put that up here. And then for tape, I use an old drywall um, tub, stainless steel pan, and um, put a bunch of tape in here. I used to have this thing completely full, so I'm trying to whittle it down, you know, especially tape you don't use ever. Uh, like throw them away. I'm trying to get down, but like drywall tape, uh, that's glow in the dark tape, that's mounting tape. Carpet tape is really good uh, for sticking things together, like book backing to things. Painter's tape, some. Uh, self-sticking or not self-sticking but double-sided velcro um then my square i don't keep this in my tool bag, tool bag anymore but i used to so if you find that you stick yours in there and then the big boy the 12 inch that's for cutting tile maybe you got um i use this a lot when i'm using a wet saw and i need to cut tile i want to mark it with a with a china marker um so it doesn't get a, a evaporated by or washed off by the water and then I had a bunch of planes, 
and I kept having trouble, at least initially, stacking, the, uh, keeping track of those. So I put my planes up there and I put some wood chisels in the back. I use this one 90% of the time. These other <laughs> combined are 10% or less. They're, they're probably more decorative. I probably just take them out every once in a while to play with them and take something down. But uh, I, I just wanted to something to put them in and display them. That's probably more than anything. Those things go on a pegboard, I'm sure, if you uh, wanted to. You've seen lots of pegboards with planes on them. Um, and then another, I think another thing I use a lot, I don't mention this, what I hang a brush. This is 99 cents of Harbor Freight. And I put in a little old uh, bucket. So I'm forever, like you're drilling stuff on here, it's getting dirty. Take that brush, take that bucket, wipe it right in. You don't wipe it on the floor. You don't have to deal with it later. I'm I'm always filling this thing up. It was so handy. Um, I don't have another trash. I don't need another trash bin. I got a trash bin. So stuff I'm throwing like hoses when I dug out of my uh, toolboxes. Why do I keep all these hoses? Oh, it was to drain snowblower oil from a snowblower I sold five years ago. Why do I still have that? Well, I never cleaned it out. So that's why. Um, and above it, let's see, above the pegboard, it's just a battery powered. This is the light. A high refrain light you can get and hang it on your um to work on your car but i find it equally useful here it's got two settings um and then i have for the other pegboard is um next to the pegboard all the charging stuff you always have to deal with all the batteries you know i got three different drills now because that's what happens after doing this i guess for long enough you get lots of extra stuff so a radio i got at the goodwill for a dollar and then I had this um, shelf left over. So I put it near my um, outlet and then did an extension with some mounting tape. And so I can have my um, everything near it and made a little man out of pipe. I don't know, I saw that one day in a magazine so I, I made it. Okay, um, the other thing for pegboard is I found, maybe this is a case for you guys too, you have, too, you have like too many little things you can't store that on a pegboard, board, but I don't want to rat hole it in a toolbox that I'm going to lose and forget what I got. So I went to this system like four years ago. It's just bins. You know, you can get the white ones. Those are always available. These color ones, they change like every season. I don't know why. But get sturdy ones. Don't get the real, real flimsy ones that can hold. Like at Walmart, they're very flimsy. These ones are at Target, so they at least hold their shape, especially during hot and cold cycles. Um... So some of the stuff like gloves, I don't know, a bunch of weird size, different things, rubber gloves, gardening gloves, automotive gloves. And then I thought this was useful for me to, like small tools that you have all these little pieces with, you want to hold them in there. Heat gun, so I don't use this every day, right? Most of these I don't. But angle grinder, I, I just used that last weekend. The air die grinder, that was on sale, so I had to, you know, get that, try that out. That was fun to put in a, to work on with the car. Oscillating cutter, use that a lot. I used to at least before I get the battery operator one. Hot glue gun. These are timers. I just sort of put this in here recently. I didn't realize how many timers I had. It's like for holidays, you know. I need to label that, but look, I got weight. I gotta deal with that. So I put an old um, rack from your, you know, you can get this at Home Depot. I found these out of the closet. I tore them out of the closet because I was replacing the closet system with uh, wood so I was like at least are still good hang them up um, all my bicycle things um, that you can imagine on well, that one for the air stems weird automotive things like draining your radiator uh, back flushing your radiator um, to test the uh, density of your of your uh, fluid in your um, radiator or your oh god oil there's all these uh, gauges can't think of their name, but anyway, I labeled them. And I keep a bunch of extra up here because I'm forever throwing stuff in there and trying to label it. So I'm trying to be better with that. One of the things I noticed in the, the toolbox is that I had a ton of Allen wrenches. Well, I'm not ready to get rid of them. I don't know why. I'll get to that later, I guess. So at least right now, I wanted to get them out of the um, toolbox and put them in a thing. So I got a bunch of extra tool bits. All these little bags are tool bits, or drill bits. <laughs> And they're different, each one is a different size. So I at least labeled that, put that in there, and have like a, a roll of bits. You can see that little thing, that's a nice handy canister. 
more drill bits I found. I, I didn't know I had two of these, so I'm gonna probably combine these into one because those are like Forstner bits and uh, extra spade bits. And this is a hodgepodge. This is definitely something you guys might have. You have a lot of maybe like screwdrivers, even more than I have. It, somehow I acquired so many and all these little bits. Well, I put these all three here because they all need to be somehow consolidated into, you know, I need to go through them. But for now, they're out of the toolbox. They're in here. When I get time, I can pull one out, go through it, throw away the old crap I don't need, and bring back the good stuff. Keep the good stuff. Next is screws. So I got like, I don't use buy Phillips head screws anymore unless I have to for like drywall or something. These are those um, deck screws with the with the um, uh, their Torx head bit in it, and that way you don't have to deal with the. You can see that if you can. So. Like, that's what I use everywhere. I hate those Phillips head screws. So I just buy a giant box of these and I'm forever digging in here. Uh, that's why there's nothing on top of here. You can tell, because I'm always in here. Next is miscellaneous screws, like in the boxes. I don't just throw screws in here. I just try to, if you don't have the box, keep it in a little baggie and write on it. And then you know like what you're digging for. Mainly hollow core um, wall anchor stuff it can be in here. So this is all that. This is for like tap cons. Um, other items like that. Then I was digging out adhesives like super glue and zip ties and I had some furniture feet. So you can see I got some super glue, I got a furniture marker, I got some graphite and zip ties. I can just pull that out and look in there. Uh, shims, I don't know if you like me, shims go everywhere. I want to throw them in something. So um, next one is brushes. Lots of brushes you use if you're ever in the same boat. You like cleaning brake discs, cleaning out the lawnmower on the outside or inside kids toys or shoes that rags so like rags and gloves could probably, they work together at one point and probably wire brushes see they're kind of all mm, like cleaning of the same family they should all go together hurricane kit knife lanterns a bunch of couple different plumbing things so like pipe dope um, pipe tape um, plumbers uh, putty um, uh, the primer and adhesive all in one with some I try to see like uh, one size in here so like one inch or two sizes one inch and three quarter and keep this one all half inch then irrigation some press fittings risers um, you know sprinkler heads extras for the pump font pond pump uh, tie downs miscellaneous rope and shoelaces if I get an old you know shoe and I'm, it's trash I'll keep the laces I find that useful quite a bit um, just ratcheting tie downs and bungee cords, you know, standard. But it's nice, I can just pull it open and kind of like, oh yeah, did I got that in here? Let me see where that is. Yeah, okay, it's in there. I'll get it. Awes and chisels and files. You saw a lot of that stuff hanging, but these are like a lot of little things. You can see I got lots of little. I don't use these all the time, but old chisels. Like you want to go ahead and just pry the heck out of something, or really bang on something that you got an old chisel. You don't want to use your good ones. I got these, so I throw them in here. These could probably hang up on the pegboard if I had more uh, space and I used them more. But for now, you can see how the labels are different. These are all, <laughs> I did these after the fact from the toolbox versus I had foresight with this. Oh, I got a bunch of rope, let's do that one day. These are all very recent, that's why they have tape on them. LED, like a, uh, my under cabinet lighting around the house. I have a lot of that soldering equipment in there for that and connectors and then straight up electronics. So there's a soldering iron, there's connectors, power adapters, uh, vampire splices, um, jumpers. Um, these are those adapters. This is a really cool, if you ever need to adapt um, two pieces of wire together, these are these uh, barrel plugs, connectors. So I throw all that in there. Screw extractors, pff, hard to use that because I probably break it more than anything. And then um, box cutters and blades. I didn't realize how many box cutters and blades I had. It was quite a bit. Um, glass cutter I put in there. Um, uh, and all these individual boxes are like um, X-Acto knives. So I just called it as, I think, cutters and blades. So maybe you use those more, you would hang yours up. Uh, last one is a bunch of potpourri too. I got a riveter. I used it three times in my life. 
Uh, I should probably <laughs> get rid of that, but I'm sure I'll need it then. A distance gun, so you measure the distance, you know, with the, uses a, uh, it looks like a garage door opener, but it measures the, the length across the room or the height in the ceiling. That's, I call it a distance gun. Infrared temperature gun, you see that little guy there, he's useful. And a moisture meter for wood, um, put that in there too. So there's all these like electronics and this riveter. I wanted a holding space for that um, because they all would fit. Um, hang up my broom, um, hang up the, the um, step ladder and this little table, it's like an X table, it opens up and it makes a, I don't know, two foot by two foot table, which has been very nice. Um, I just trying to get this stuff off the floor because it was always leaning against something and it wouldn't fall over. Um, same thing with this. See, I haven't done this back corner yet, um, but this folding camping table from Aldi works great for like normal. Just go out to something on the driveway and you want to set something up. It's small. It's very light, very small. Um, and then other little like folding box thing I saw at Aldi too. You can carry your tools in it. Um, if you guys like that, you sh you know you can get one of those and hang them up. Like it's nice to go around the the yard or to go. T I went to a neighbor's house and did his bathroom last weekend, and I I had my little box on wheels. You know, you could throw a bunch of things and you can throw a saw in it and uh, a bunch of other tools. And then lastly, for the pegboard outside the pegboard is um, a cabinet. Uh, I just had this cabinet from I think somebody just gave it to me one day. And all it is, is is like a lot of the liquids. So like the oils for the car and the fluids, brake cl cleaner, graphite, um, WD-40, um, glue, Bondo if I need to, spray foam, some spray paint, oil for the air gun, oil filters, air filters, some leftover Romex I need to move to another thing. And then I had, um, I was cleaning out I have a lot of like electrical like f switches you know i did so much electrical work and pipe fittings uh, uh conduit fittings sorry and boxes and and pipe straps and u straps and everything and outlets and things so i i just sort of started this one here too and uh it's like uh you know it always seems like i'm replacing an outlet here and there i see that's broken or switch um that is uh in need of replacement. These two are my electrical bags. So electrical, I mean, I go to these a lot, I would say. This is my go-to electrical bag. Um, you got all sorts of tools. So I don't hang these up because they seem like I just take this bag and I go somewhere. Like, if I, if, if, if I only used one in a while, that's fine. But uh, if you got cutters to cut the Romex, right? I got strippers to strip back the sheathing on the Romex. Some tin snips. These are very useful too to get real close and cut off if you don't have uh, cross cutters. All the other supplies, you know, 12 gauge nuts in its own plastic bag, 14 gauge in its own plastic bag, the DMM, a knife, you know, just a regular uh, go bag that I seem to take everywhere with me. The Romex outside stripper, the outlet, an outlet um, tester, GFCI, you know, to make sure. It's like these things always seem to go together, so that's why I put them together, um, rather than trying to pull them off the pull them off of the uh, wall. And see, this is a bunch of like left. This is a bunch of electrical supplies, like not necessarily outlets, but like wire, extension cords. Um, I have extra connectors in there, you know, some uh, adapters to the wall, some, uh, uh, you know, give you more outlets. So I put those up there and I hide them because they're, uh, I had the space. So, um, and I had this thing that was available, this cabinet, and I built a, a shelf and used some of those old brackets. Just kind of bent the, the lip, screwed them up, put a ledger on the wall to, with tap on, screwed it off, and then it makes a nice little space actually to hold all my little uh, speed clamps and regular clamps, you know, bar clamps, uh, levels, and some extra Harbor Freight things, you know, when you go there, they give you that coupon, so 
can't not pick up another flashlight. I only have seven of them, you know, just in case I need one. But I have used it before and I turn it on when I have this door open and I can see inside. Um, so this is an old freezer that we used to have, um, but we got better at not hoarding so much frozen food that we don't eat and just goes bad. So we emptied it and I put it over here now. Now eventually that will go somewhere, be sold or given away. And um, lastly, so back to the pegboard, we did a setup. I got my little space here. It's not behind the car, which it used to be, which was a pain. Now it's out front. This is what I store my pegboard in. This is at um, Home Depot. I probably bought this six, seven years ago, but it's still there. It's a, it's a double-sided bin. So one side is all those long pegs, you know, that you can never, and you should keep something like this. And I didn't want to throw it like in a shoebox like this, because they all get like wrapped up in each other and they're like pulling crap out. So that's why I bought this. Um, up to you. Like if you don't have a lot of them, just throw them in a bin or something. But like I'm always changing these out. And that's the whole point of this pegboard system, right? It's supposed to be so when your needs change and your projects change, you're more, you got three kids now and they're all in college and you got cars you got to work on and change oil, you make that pegboard to cardboard. No, you're a woodworker now and you're making furniture for your in-laws. Now you're the furniture board, you know? So switch all that stuff out. Um, this is all the, some more of those keepers and then separated by hooks and, um, I don't know, <laughs> more like hooks and then some more, I guess they call these like angled, maybe angled rods, straight rods. So you just get, you get a kit of these, you know, these come in a big old um, uh, box at like Home Depot. And you don't always use a bunch of them, but I found this was useful for me. Um, and as I'm still playing around with with changing stuff, I'm kind of keeping this right here. Typically, this thing would be in the shed because I don't use it that much. But uh, that's the that's the garage um, for now. And hopefully, um, you know, you've got some ideas out of it too. And if you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully, uh, you get your stuff organized. It feels good. And you can find your things easier and not spend so much time searching. So... Let me know if it helps you. Thanks.